We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and not like we haven't been talking about it for the last few weeks of podcasting, but we are finally here to talk about all things the Las Vegas Grand Prix, uh, because it's happening. Uh, As we record this, we are a couple hours away from the grand opening ceremonies, which are bound to be ridiculous, um, and we will probably talk about in the recap episode, but it's happening, it's here. It is. It's finally here, and I feel like we've been waiting for this for, what, years now? The anticipation has been building forever. Um, But it's finally here, and I'm really excited that we get to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. This is – it's going to be ridiculous. I know. I feel like it's just going to be absolute chaos and very Vegas-like, and I feel like there's a lot of hoopla around the race, and it's not necessarily, like – I feel like it would be super distracting um, for me because I'm like shiny thing. Yeah. Um, but I think it's really cool what they're doing. And I'm excited to see what these opening ceremonies are and, you know, the rest of um, the weekend festivities. So it's also cool that we have, I know I said this before, but it is kind of cool that we have a Saturday night race. So mm-hmm. it'll be cool to see Vegas, you know, at night under the lights. I'm excited. Yeah. I, I am too. I mean, I, you know, we, we've been talking a lot of, about this over the last few weeks of like skepticism, which is very warranted based off what we've seen. And, you know, Lewis Hamilton came out today basically saying, you know, we don't want this to be the type of circus where we come in, disrupt everyone's lives and then, you know, come back out. Um, totally valid. Um, I think we're going to have a little bit of that this weekend, but it's also Vegas. Like people are going to be too drunk to notice. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's been on the calendar for so long. People know what's going to happen and what's going on. Um, the locals can't, obviously, but for people coming in for different events, um, I think people kind of already knew that this was happening. But yeah, it does seem like it's a lot of effort and disruption for, you know, one race um, for yeah. one weekend. So um, who knows? But again, they'll, you know, with time get better. Um, this is the first year. I'm still not convinced that the track is actually you know poured um but I'm here for them to to prove me wrong so yeah I personally think that this track especially this specific track layout will not be the track that we're going to be seeing you know maybe we'll see it again next year but I don't think we're going to see it for the current duration of the, the current duration of the Vegas Grand Prix contract is 10 years um and with the what was it it was something about like the idea of this being on the calendar in perpetuity um so I I but I, I don't think that we're going to see this track layout very long for a couple of reasons that we will get into no I definitely agree but yeah, we can we can get into it if you want to. Well, before we get into it, that is a very different b- blank wall than we are used to seeing behind you. If you're watching this on YouTube, where are you right now? Um, I just got off a three hour bus from El Chaltén to Calafate, which is in Patagonia, Argentina. Uh, funny enough, I'm wearing my Patagonia shirt. Um, but yeah, I am traveling at the moment and recording the podcast. So I brought all of my podcasting equipment to Patagonia, Argentina, <laughs> and here we are. So we will get a few episodes of Emily in the Wild this week. Very so, exciting. You're welcome. <laughs> but with that, we can get into our news of the week. And I guess it's kind of been the news of two weeks because we did have an off weekend. So We've got a little bit to catch up on, mostly just about Vegas, but, um, but yeah. And I know there's one thing that you really, really want to talk about that's non-Vegas related that happened this week. So I'm going to let you take this one. Yeah. So as, as you may know, if you've been around for a minute, but, um, I think it was last year, Valtteri Botas released a picture on Instagram of him in a river completely naked. Um, and it, it went as it absolutely should have, it went viral, um, including him signing a copy to give to his favorite former teammate, Lewis Hamilton, uh, to hang in his home. Um, but, um, Botas has announced the release of a 2024 boat 
ass calendar of 12 months of different naked Botas photos. I've seen one of them and it's exactly what you think. Um, and this is raising money for Movember, um, which is something that he has been participating in since the beginning of this month when he shaved off the mustache and has been growing it back out. Um, but yeah, um, uh, emphasis, but um, Botas's butt is all over Vegas at the moment. <laughs> Which is so funny, and it's so Botas, too. Like, I think that's kind of cool that he's really, like, owning who he is and his personality and doing something good with it, so. I'm leaning into don't it. know if I'll have one. I don't know if I'll have one hanging in my house, but I think it's a really cool concept. Yeah, so. exactly. But another big thing that happened this week that didn't necessarily come out, but it was the ne- Netflix Cup. So for those of you guys who aren't aware, Netflix did a golf tournament with some of the drivers and some um PGA tour members I think they're also part of the PGA tour yeah okay sorry the whole golf world you know disruption but um so they teamed drivers and golfers to do a one day quick um golf tournament at the win Las Vegas which I think when it came out it was so so cool especially how Netflix did all of the you know, hype for it and their like hype video. Um, I unfortunately did not get to watch it, but one thing that I did see that came out of it was Carlos pulled a Lando and broke the trophy. So Carlos and um, Justin Thomas won. So they got a big trophy. They got like Netflix race, um, checkered race jackets, uh, which is kind of cool, like a play on the master's jacket, and they got a big trophy, and Carlos broke it. <laughs> Dropped it. Yep. He 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 did he did what Lando did. Um I think that trophy was also made out of plastic, so I think it'll be fine. It's it's not like a what fifty thousand dollar Hungarian. It's not the Hungarian trophy. trophy. <laughs> um yeah. So I I did watch the I think it was like three and a half hours of coverage. I personally think that the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas is the most pretentious hotel on the strip. And I just wanted to throw that in there because that is something that I have felt very deep in my soul since I was about 17 years old. Um <laughs> But it was it was interesting. Um, it was very much um, like v- very. This is new, um, and we've never done this before. There was some glitches. The camera angles were not my favorite. Um, they they there. It was um, it was a lot gimmickier than I thought it would be. Um, mm. But it like not entirely in a terrible way. Like they they did some you know cross you know, pollination with sponsorship, like the, I guess there's a, like a live action squid game, um, which I've never watched squid game. And I think that's about murder. So I don't know how you do that live action with people. Um, but they, they, they had the, the very creepy, um, doll thing and the red light, green light, and kind of made that into a golf hole. And I guess Alex Albon, um, commented that it, that the, the doll looked like his girlfriend who was a pro, um, uh, golfer. Um, so that was, it, it was it was not horrible. Yeah, I feel like if they get the right people to do it and it's, like, not as gimmicky, I think it would be more entertaining. For me personally, again, I didn't watch it, but I'm just assuming based off what you're saying and what I've heard and, and read this week. Um, but, like I was saying earlier, the race, I think, and all the events around the race will get better in time. So I'm sure, like, next year, the feedback, you know, they'll make it more entertaining next year. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was it was horrible. I I do kind of feel bad for for the drivers and the and the golfers for they had to they had to do everything with like AirPods in their ears because they were also being interviewed as they were going from hole to hole, um, and it was just I was just like that. It was, it was a little much. Like, if Marshawn Lynch was one of, like, the sideline reporters, and, like, if they, like, pulled them to talk to Marshawn, um, you know, once they got to a hole before they started, then that would probably would have been a little bit better than what, we, what we'd what we had. Yeah. Well, that's how they do, like, the, the Phil Nicholson Tiger Woods golf tournament as well. They all have AirPods in. Like, when they played with um, Peyton Manning and um, Tom Brady, I think they did that the, the same way with AirPods so that they can talk to him the whole time. So... I like it because there's interaction. Yeah, I like it because there's interaction and like real time, but I totally understand it's not like the the greatest approach. 
I think the the biggest issue is like they would have the microphones turned on for like one part of the pairing and not the other. So for example, with Carlos and Justin, um, like they would have Carlos's mic on, but not Justin. So you couldn't hear what they were both saying. And I think that if if that had been not happening and we can hear the golfers talking to each other a little bit better, we did get a lot of that, but like as the night went on. So I think that they figured out that that was something that they needed to fix. Um, I think that that, you know, that that'll be something that they'll they'll have to improve on, but yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was a cool thing. It was a couple of hours of your life. Um, I wasn't doing anything else. It was the beginning of the the hockey game that I was going to be watching that I missed and it wasn't anything exciting. So all good. All good. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think we're Vegas, we're going through a learning process in every aspect. So We'll get there eventually. But looking at Vegas, we do have a bunch of storylines that came out over like the last two weeks like we were talking about. And I think we should just run through all of them, kind of run, um, run it back. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Um, Just go through through them and see. Can you tell I have been uh, not sleeping the last few days? Um, Let's go through them and just kind of hit them all because there's so many. And I'm very excited honestly just sitting here talking about it it makes me super excited for Vegas I know I said I was like oh I'm excited but I am really excited the anticipation is killing me I just want to know if it's actually going to happen but (laughs) here we go so if you guys have not seen which you probably have because it's everywhere ticket and hotel prices are absolutely plummeting clearly they thought way more people were going to be interested but also the pricing that everything came out with I don't know who in their right mind would go at that price. Like, even the plummeting and, like, dropping ticket prices and stuff is still very, very expensive. So, I feel like they just missed the mark on pricing. Yeah, I feel like they they forgot that a bulk of Formula One – like, obviously, Formula One is the sport of millionaires and billionaires. We know this. But they also um, – they, they have a massive, you know, following in Europe that are, you know, regular people who just love motorsport. And I guess that they forgot that that's the same thing that they're growing in the U.S. And it's not – all just the gazillionaires and the really, really rich people who would, you know, who are interested in going, especially to race in Vegas. Hell, me and my best friend would probably take a last second road trip to Vegas for this weekend if I didn't have other volleyball commitments that I, you know, people would kill me if I left. Um, so, so I, so I'm not leaving, but it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's a lot more accessible now because I don't think hotels are even remotely anywhere near filled. Yeah, no, it's wild. But I mean, I feel like we kind of knew this was going to happen. At least I felt like it was going to happen just because it was so ridiculous and like no one's going to pay that. So, and it's hard too because Vegas is such a destination city. People have to get there and travel anyways. It's not like Miami where it's a huge city. Austin's a pretty big city. Um, I think it's a very different type of race. So I think they just kind of missed it. Again, yeah. learning experiences, Vegas. You'll get there eventually. Exactly. Um, I'm also convinced that the paddock is still not done. And I don't oh, think no. it will be done. No. I am. Every single picture I see is a rendering. It literally is an artistic rendering. It's not the actual building. I don't buy it. It's not real. I, I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if you flew a plane or a drone over and it was like not even there. Like there is no paddock. I'm convinced it's not there. It's going to be yeah. so bad, Catherine. I know. I, 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 if you follow us on Instagram at going.off.track, um, you'll, you would have seen a couple days ago, I shared something from ESPN F1, of, um, one of their, their pictures of part of the track and paddock. And I was like, ooh, the Photoshop on this is glorious. Um, yeah, no, it's we, serious. It's just, it's, it's not like – it's real enough that they're going to be able to host this race because I think we would have heard about that by now, but it's not done. No, I think we're going to be, you know, holding things together with a duct tape and a prayer. Duct tape and a lot of giant ass vinyls covering things up. Along with that, we have, you know, all the hotels are kind of getting in on this too. Um, One of my personal favorite hotels, the Bellagio, is opening up in honor of everyone's favorite Australian driver that is an Oscar Piastri, um, a pop-up shoey bar for Danny Ricardo. 
I love it. This is so disgusting. I want to know if it's like your own shoe, if they give you a shoe. I have so many questions and it's really I know. gross. <laughs> yeah. No, I, but I love it. I love how they're buying into it and playing into it. No, there, there, there's a, some Formula One podcasters who had just um, launched their channel back in uh, January of this year. Um, and with like every, you know, number milestone of new followers, they would um, do shoeies. And one of the hosts got very ill um, because he found mold in the shoe. And I'm like, that is absolutely disgusting. Oh my gosh, no. Disgusting. That's disgusting. Okay. That, no. Yeah. I don't think so. They hopefully, do those that. are, I those are like new be... shoes. Yeah, I um I don't know if I would ever do one. I think I'd have to be like heavily influenced in order to do one. I don't know. It's a lot yeah. for me. Yeah. Speaking I, of a lot, yeah. um there was um going to be a massive hospitality worker strike in Vegas, um, which days before people started coming into to the city for this event and all the, the pre-race events, they um, the union did strike a tentative deal with MGM. So that was not happening. Um, it's not happening, um, which is fortunate. Like, obviously, you know, Union's good. Um, we've seen a lot of, of union movement this year. Um, it just it it's I I'm glad that that's not like another level that we're having to to worry about this week. Yeah, I don't think uh, Vegas could handle you know one more thing going poorly for them. No. So. Oh God, I'm so stressed. I don't know if anyone else is, but I'm like almost sick to my stomach with anxiety over this race because I know it's not going to happen, and if I'm freaking out, like. I'm so far removed from it, but it's just, it's giving me, this is what keeps me up at night, Catherine. This is what it does. Lovely. Um, the other thing that's wild to me is like, they spent so much time and effort putting a chapel in the paddock, but the paddock isn't even done. So like, why? Why is it necessary? It's not. Focus on because like, it's actually Vegas. building the paddock. Oh, I know, but it's, it's stressing me out, Catherine. I can't take it. Okay. I've seen I've seen the pictures. It looks it looks exactly what you would expect out of a Formula One theme chapel. Um, I wonder if like drivers are going to cycle in and and become officiants because I think that that would just take it to a whole next level of extra if you just like drunkenly decide to get married at an F one race and there's Max Verstappen, there's Alex Albon, there's Lewis Hamilton. I get the driver thing, but like I want Gunther or Toto to marry me. Let's let's get the team principals in there. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Honestly, yeah. honestly, Fred, sign me up. Any of them, but yeah, that's like the weirdest thing that I've seen, and it's like completely unnecessary. But the other, and like I know there's a bunch of like other cool things coming out too. But the other completely unnecessary thing I think for me personally because it's so over the top, is how all of these liveries are being like, oh my God. announced. Yeah. Though, I, I've wild. seen some I've seen some of the liveries. I, I personally think that Williams is the clear winner of, of livery of the weekend. I, I think that they just knocked it out of the park. They did perfect. No, I agree. And we'll, I think everyone has a special livery this weekend, don't they? It seems like. Most of the cars, yeah. Yeah, which is amazing. I'm obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. We know we love li uh, livery change-ups because we never know who's driving on the track. It's amazing. Yeah, it's 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 great. Um, another really great thing, and this is totally a dig at Ferrari, is Red Bull released a video of some of the Cirque du Soleil performers doing a pit stop, and I sent it to you, and my first thought was like, hey, that's a Ferrari pit stop right there, because it was very, oh it was very God. much a clown show, um, which we've had some very clown show Ferrari pit stops this season. So bad. Just, yeah, just depressing. Just look at the, go to, go to the, the Red Bull, Bull Instagram depressing. accounts. You can't miss it. It is, it is very depressing if you're a Ferrari no. fan, but it, it was funny. It is, but it was, it was funny. I, I understood the joke, what they were trying to get at. Um, but yeah, so lots of new liveries, lots of new helmets. Um, Acon has a Deadpool helmet, which I think is so cool because 
Ryan Reynolds was Deadpool and he now bought into the partnership at Alpine. Um, so I think that'll be really cool to see, um, that one, I'm excited for that partnership just period because Ryan Reynolds does so many great things for sports and marketing in general, but, um, I'm excited to see some of the new helmets out there as well. I love the helmet and the livery change up. Yeah, no, it, it looks great. I, I will say personally, Alpine, not only is, is Akon wearing a, a, a themed helmet, but Alpine has announced the palace livery for their race, which I personally think doesn't look very different from their regular car. Um, and But they're insisting that it's different, so it's different. <laughs> They say yes, so we say okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and then also, not not a livery thing, but Haas has teamed up with my favorite landscape photographer of all time, who is based in Vegas, Peter Lick, um, and has released some prints that feature um, various Vegas landscapes and also the Haas F1 car. I have I got the email about it like maybe an hour ago, and it's like, ooh, those are cool. Um, I, I own some of his his prints in a very, very large hundred pound book um, that is just still living in a, a corner and I will find a place that I can show it off. But I, I it's, it's very, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Like this, <laughs> this book is huge. It's huge. Oh, I'm excited to see it. I love like the, all the cool photography that they do with F1, especially because the cars are so fast. So I'm really excited to see um, what these prints look like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of, of pictures, um, the sphere, which is that giant thing that you've definitely seen that will be looking down upon um, the race, um, is Formula One has rented it out. You, um, the band U2 has been nice enough to give the sphere to Formula One for the weekend. They've been, they're, they're, that's their residency right now. So um, they're taking a couple um, well-deserved days off from their concerts um, to, to let the uh, sphere show, broadcast very large versions of the driver's faces and probably some other things that we will see. Um, but it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how um, Formula One is going to be utilizing the sphere this, this weekend. Yeah. Cause it sounds like they're going to do driver announcements of some sort on the sphere, which I just hope and pray that it's not as cringy as Miami because oh my cool J, love you so much, but I was uncomfortable for everyone involved. So, so were the drivers. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. I hopefully, you know, Vegas, they figure it out because they're going to do like a walk up style again in Vegas like they do in Miami. So yeah, I just oh, don't repeat Miami. Please yeah. don't repeat Miami. But yeah. No, speaking of, of Vegas and things that are iconic to Vegas, Vegas legend Donny Osmond will be singing the national anthem on Saturday nights. Uh, so that I think that that's kind of that's kind of the, the cool thing. We, we can list that as, as one of the, the not uh, weird, ridiculous things like that's like the correct choice. Um, completely agree. Completely agree. It was the right choice. I mean, there's some other people who have residencies in Vegas, but I think he's like, you know. Mr. Vegas. So I think it's, it's pretty cool that he gets to do that. Yeah. And then the, the last thing on our list, which is probably the most absurd, but I had to throw it in there because when I Googled Vegas Grand Prix, this was one, like the third article that popped up is uh, TMZ has reported that there is a Nevada brothel offering the drivers free, you know, what's in honor of race weekend. So dumb. I mean, leave it to a Vegas so brothel Vegas. to, to, uh, bring this up but that's and also tmz oh god what is wrong with this world it's wild that's an odd one for sure i did not see that on the vegas bingo card to be completely honest i mean i know vegas is a lot but i didn't see that one coming so and of course that is is typical reporting out of tmz oh of course 100 percent. that's like tmz to a t Mm-hmm. Ugh, but anyways, looking at the race, there was a race, a Grand Prix in Vegas previously. Yeah, for two years, it's just, even. <laughs> two whole years, and uh, it's just coming back. So this is a brand new circuit. It's still not built. I'm convinced it's still not built. I will keep saying that. Um, and it does go right down Las Vegas Boulevard, which is like the main strip. So like the Las Vegas strip is Las Vegas Boulevard. 
So it'll be super, super exciting to see um, those pictures and just to watch that race down Las Vegas Boulevard. But I'm a little worried about the pit exit. The pit Holy exit is going hell. to be a problem. Holy hell, this is just adding to my Las Vegas anxiety. Like, oh, it's going to be super dicey. There's not a lot of room. We're going to have it there's going to be an accident, a crash. It wouldn't something. it wouldn't surprise me if they change the the opening, maybe they extend the exit a little bit. I it would not surprise me at all if if there's one part of the track that get, does get changed throughout this weekend that the pit exit is modified in some way. Whether or not that helps, I think that that that's going to happen. And this is kind of one of the the facts of life when you have you know a street circuit, um, whereas the old circuit in which was the Caesar's Palace Grand Prix, which ran in eighty one and eighty two, was in the Caesar's Palace parking lot, um, which so it was a temp track um, that was completely different from this. Um, and um, it people did, like those races were apparently like very not enjoyable for a lot of reasons. Um, in the 81 race, Nelson Pique finished uh, uh, the race in, I think like in fifth or sixth, and he clinched the driver's championship, but needed 15 minutes to recover from heat exhaustion, um, which makes me think of uh, the Qatar Grand Prix this year where everyone oh, where needed they were to dropping from like heat exhaustion. Flies. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Well this year it's not going to, be heat exhaustion it's gonna be cold it's a night race in the desert and it's gonna be really really cold um which is bringing in concerns about the tires because tires are used to be run really hot and not in you know not freezing but very very cold desert temperatures um so yeah it's very interesting because it's gonna be like 60 to 50 degrees or like 10 20 degrees celsius yeah um and it's gonna be the coldest race that they've ever had potentially and definitely this season so it's definitely interesting to see what's gonna happen um the tire blankets i mean can really only do so much so i think we're gonna see some people struggling with tires this weekend (laughs) oh big time yeah tire blankets i i did a little research on this because i didn't like i i knew generally what those numbers were but like specifically so the tire blankets are keep keep the tires at 70 degrees celsius which is 158 degrees fahrenheit whereas the like optimum running temperatures for these tires is in a window of between 90 and 110 degrees celsius which in fahrenheit is about 194 degrees to 230 uh to quote paris hilton that's hot um and we're we're not gonna have that this weekend no i don't know how they'll be able to get tires up to temperature honestly it's gonna be super interesting to see yeah there, there's I think we're gonna, gonna be... see some people struggle and i think it's gonna really yeah. affect strategy really oh, big strategy time. yeah i mean this is this I, is new to everyone so strategy is gonna just kind of go out the window and there's just gonna be a lot of hoping and praying i'm telling you duct tape and a prayer yep it's the motto of vegas um but yeah so the tire should be really interesting it should make the race interesting i honestly just don't know what to say because i feel like it's just everything is compiling for this to be just an absolute shit storm yeah, it, this this could be like car, you know, cars on ice, uh, really. And I, oh I think um, I I don't know of what tire um, tire t- um, types Pirelli is bringing to this race. Um, but if I have to guess, I don't think people are going to be using the hard tires because I think it's just going to be too cold for those to get up to temperature and to, to get them to run. I think that you'd be, you know, trying to drive on ice with, with the, with the hard tires. So this is definitely going to be a soft medium race. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Oh my gosh. It's just stressing me out thinking about it to be completely honest. I know. I know. Like I I want this to be a ridiculous race, but I also want this to be, you know, a race where the cars are going to like successful. Exactly. Like I I want, like, I don't want 16 DNFs and, and, you know, that, that we had like what last race or, or whenever. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want the, these cars to be able to function under the lights. Oh, well, we'll see. 
Mm-hmm. We will see. With that, do you want to get into our predictions of the Yes. Year? Yes. So for poll, who do you think is going to get that? Words are uh, hard. <laughs> yeah, I... Who do you um, think is going to get poll on, uh, for Sunday? So oh this God. was this was this was really hard because obviously we've had like a lot of different pole sitters lately. Um, but I also think that if there's a, a team that is going to be impacted the least by all of these unknowns in the cold, I think it's going to be Red Bull. So I have to give this to Max. Yeah, that's fair. I, you know, I'm pulling a rabbit out of a hat here. Um, I think Charles is going to be able to one lap it again. Um, He has been doing really good in qualifying. Obviously, he's not going to do anything with his pole position um, (laughs) because he's Charles Leclerc. But I do think he may be able to pull out pole, potentially. Also, just because I didn't want to pick Max. So, Okay, so coming off of pole, who is on your podium for the Grand Prix? So... Because we had a, a, a surprise podium from Fernando Alonso and putting him back, and um, I'm also going to give Red Bull a double podium. Um, so I think it's going to be Max and then Fernando, and then I think we're going to have another. Uh, we're we're going to get Perez in, on the on the podium for P3. He does like a good street race. He does. So we'll see. I, on the other hand, did not put Checo on my podium because we all know <laughs> how Emily feels about Checo. Um, so I do have Max winning, obviously. And then, you know, I think because it's going to be such a hard race, we're going to need some, you know, years of experience behind us. So I have Lewis P2 and Fernando P3. Okay. Interesting. I think it's going to be an interesting race, but I think those two are so seasoned that they, um, that they'll be able to make podium and Lewis is not driving terribly and Fernando you know is coming back so we'll see we'll see yeah the the real question is is the Mercedes car going to be able to function because they had a terrible time in Sao Paulo they did they did but you know two weeks off we're we're looking up we're looking up see so next um prediction we have is p10 p10 is the last position where you can earn points you get one point for p10 Catherine, who did you make uh, pick for P10? I picked our boy, the the man who requested this Vegas Grand Prix years ago. I picked Danny Ricardo. I love this, but I but I don't because I want him to do better than P10. That's <laughs> fair. Las Vegas Grand Prix, but I but I think it's a solid pick. I do think it's a solid pick. Yeah, thanks. Um, and then so for my P10, I. You know, against my better judgment, I have selected Logan Sargent <laughs> because it's his third home race of the year, <laughs> and maybe it's lucky number three, third time's a charm. I'm holding out for for Logan to get another point uh, this season, so we'll see. What? Hopefully. Let's let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> let's hope. But if he lets me down, this is the last time I I pick him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um. Watch, I, we pick him, so he probably is going to DNF. Poor guy. Oh, my God. Anyways. Um, so then going into our um, surprises of the weekend, my surprise is that the race is actually going to happen because I'm still not convinced. I feel like we are being bamboozled, and it is just not real life. <laughs> so You think that they're, they're trying to offer us some uh, oceanfront property in Vegas? Yes, exactly. That I feel like we are making, you know, trying to make water wet. I don't know. Water not wet. <laughs> My analogies are out the window, but I think it's just... You've had a long day. I've had a really long day. No, but I think it's going to be like an absolute disaster. So that's my biggest surprise. What about yeah. you? Mine is um, that I just, I just feel like something about this weird ass track is going to be good for the Haas cars. And they drive well on Saturdays. That is interesting because I have Haas doing a dumb and that they're going to have a third bad home race. (laughs) So So one of us will be right and one of us will be wrong. Yeah, that's true. Or we could 
beat in the middle and they could do average. But I, uh, Maybe. that is what I have for a dumb for this weekend. Um, and then are we jumping back on the Ferrari train for doing a dumb for you? Or have we changed things up this week? No, we have not. I, I think that Ferrari is going to find some way. Like Ferrari is the car that is going to put hards on as the strategy on oh a track God, that, that is. Catherine. They've done it before. So they have, hopefully they've learned really their lesson. But yeah, so f- for context, last season uh, there was a race early on um, where like the the hard tires were known to be like ice skates um and ferrari decided to put those ice skates on their cars and guess what ferrari didn't do well um but i i think ferrari is gonna find some way to clown themselves in in this cold weather that's fair yeah i don't disagree with you but i hope for better i know you do uh anyways so then the you know Next, let's say, few things that we've been monitoring um, from race weekends is the race for P2 in the Drivers' Championship and also Max Verstappen's race to 1,000 laps led. So, Catherine, break down the numbers for us. Where are we at with Hamilton versus Checo and also Verstappen's race to 1,000 laps? So Hamilton versus Perez, uh, the the margins are not looking great in Lewis's favor, especially in light of Sao Paulo and the disqualification a couple of races back. Um, there's 32 points between them and 52 points left. So, so Lewis cannot outright beat Perez in P2. Perez can clinch it this weekend, but Hamilton can push it off um, as long as um, he outscores Perez by seven points. So basically, Lewis needs to win this race um, in order for this to to go to Abu Dhabi. Um, hey, we'll, we'll don't, see. don't, you know, discount the uh, double DNF because I'm not. that could happen. You're, so you're Checo... Not if Checo DNFs, which, or double DNFs, um, then he and Hamilton, you know, at least get seven points, then could be still push it off to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So it it's not looking good for Lewis, especially considering the issues that he's having with the car, but it's still possible. Um, and then going to Max going for a thousand laps led, um, he's currently at 922 laps, which means that there's 78 laps to go. Um, and there are 108 laps left this season. And considering there are only two races and no sprints, I am confident that there are 108 laps left for once. Um, so the still not convinced. Is- <laughs> Math is is really hard for me. Um, The margin is also pretty pretty thin, Um, but this I I feel more confident in Max reaching a thousand laps led than I do in Hamilton beating Perez for for P two. Oh, completely. Like I wish I didn't agree, but I do. And again, this is a season that doesn't exist in Emily's mind. So give him the thousand laps and let's move on. Twenty twenty four. Here we come. (laughs) Over it. We'll see. Oh, my goodness. Well, any final thoughts, Catherine, on Las Vegas? Um, It's going to be hectic. I, I'm really excited for, um, as, as we are recording this for tonight, to see what these opening ceremonies are going to be. It looks like it's going to be ridiculous. Um, It's also at 1030 at night my time, so who needs sleep? Um, I'm one of those old people who goes to bed early. Hey, girlfriend. It's at 230 a.m. for me. I know time is weird like that. Ugh. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's going to be really interesting. I'm really curious to see how these cars are going to handle the cold and all the behind the scenes nonsense that we're going to see pop up on social media. That's not going to make the broadcast. Yeah, no, I am really looking forward to, you know what I'm really looking forward to the grid walk. Oh my God. Yes. That yes. is what I'm looking forward to a ton besides all of the madness and the chaos and, you know, proof of life that this track actually exists. Um, I'm very excited for the grid walk. So. Yeah. Martin, Martin Brundle is going to bring it. Um, and I do hope that the celebrities that are on the grid are aware that if Martin comes up to you with a microphone, just fucking say hi. 
Egan we talked about one. this in our last episode, which was F101 about Gunther Steiner's book, Surviving to Drive, um, where we, we we went in for, for a couple of minutes on A, Gunther's correct opinions about the gridwalk and B, why we agree <laughs> with it. Um, so go go and check that episode out and and give that one a listen. Um, and and yeah, let's it's 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 going to be a great one it's it's going to be one for the record books oh definitely i'm so excited to to see what happens but looking forward through the weekend make sure you're following us on our instagram for updates and we will also have the biggest grand prix recap episode coming out early next week i'm gonna say early next week because TBD on Emily's Wi-Fi situation. (laughs) So, but it will come out early next week. But that's it for the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.